We're breaking this thing down from the beginning. Let's see if all the pieces come together. I'm going to attach all the snippets of my videos together in sort of a timeline kind of scenario to see if the pieces match, to see if we actually have been following the right, I guess, trail or track in regards to figuring out what happened that night, what really, really happened that night. So we're going to begin with this very first snippet. As you see, it's right before um, they arrived at the Crown Plaza. These are the young ladies that drove with Kanika to the party. And they were cutting up a little bit in the car. I don't know if they were making fun of Kanika or just having a good time. Who knows? But this is the very beginning. As you see, we all know she arrived with her friends. There's Kanika right there. You know when the supply go up with the gang. Tell y'all, tell y'all did to go to 
sleep on Shadi. He got a million Man. questions. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got a million exactly. questions. Exactly. This is bedtime. Love y'all, man. I'm going to let y'all in a minute. I love you too, bro. All right. Hang up, folks. This is Tanika Nick, and I know everybody recognizes this footage. It's the Ty Rollins uh, footage from the night that Kenika Jenkins came up missing, was found killed, etc., etc. Um, and an important piece of footage, I think, because it highlights the mood and what's going on in that room that night. Now, when it comes to this footage, a lot of people look at it and they say, Yo, um, Ty was. Uh, targeting Kanika Jenkins and her friends with this footage. Not really targeting, but highlighting the fact, you know, Kanika was in the atmosphere and it was focused on Kanika. But when you relook at this footage, it looks more or less as if he might have been focusing this camera on his buddy Pease. Let's have a look and I can show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's Kanika on the bed with her phone. That's what I was breaking down in this video. The fact that basically all Kanika, well, Kanika and all her friends are kind of in the background of this footage. I also pointing out the fact that basically Ty had the camera on peas most of the night. I was pointing out the fact that every time he turned around, he holding that camera up and angle it, angling it towards peas. That's kind of what I was saying in this footage. Um, a lot of people said they couldn't really hear me, so I'm kind of talking over this footage, and I hope it doesn't kind of tamper with the way I had it initially set out, you know, set up. I think it's because he knew something was going down that night, and he was keeping an eye on his buddy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Watch his body language, his face expressions, and so forth. I'm talking about Ty. Watch his facial expressions and his body language and how he mainly keys his camera in on Dorian. Now, Tanasia gets caught in a lot of this footage, and I think it's by default because you know how girls do. Every time there's a live going on, they want to pop all in your live. It's your sister, so what you going to do? Tell her she can't get in your live. So she pops her head in, gets turned, leans all into the footage, gets all odd looking, all cozied up to her brother, trying to get into this live. But I think the live is geared towards peace. And yeah, you see Kanika and her friends in the background, but check the angle that he's holding the, his arm up, basically, to capture him and his buddy. In order to make sure you get somebody into your life, other than yourself, you gotta stretch your arm out and angle it in a way. You're gonna catch some stuff behind you, and I think Kanika and her friends were caught by default. You know what I mean? I think the aim wasn't them specifically. See what I mean? He angling that camera mainly to focus on uh, peas. Pay attention. <laughs> something else too whoever came to this door initially to have them kids turn down the radio or put the towel under the door or whatever they came and told those kids wasn't immediately recognized as a member of management or somebody in a professional capacity for one when people look up and see who it is they're like ah oh, they ain't no damn manager and whatever that person said or showed them uh, reassured them that yes they were in management or an authority pay attention but off weight 
I want to get this clear. But off first glance, they weren't considered to be somebody like that. So when we're looking back through this footage, make sure you're looking for someone that doesn't look like they belong to the hotel staff because this person wasn't immediately recognized as a member of management. Listen. Now, whatever that manager said to him, they said something to the point of keep it down, this, then, the third. I heard something faint in the background, Thomas, uh, call the cops or something. Let me take it back to make sure I ain't hit nothing wrong then. Ty said, you heard what he said, Psh, like on BD, all on, um, like all on um, what, what you saying? Like you ain't worried about the popo because all on um, cool with you or them or whatever. Let's take it back just so I ain't making something out of nothing. <laughs> Now you see he holds that camera back up. It looks as though that he's focusing on Kanika and him. However, pay attention to the angle of that phone. I don't think he is. And also, in this particular point of the footage, watch how when the P's do recognize that he's being recorded again, how Ty brings that camera back down. It's like, okay, he holds it up, captures P's, you know, recording them or whatever. You see Tanasia clueless as fuck or whatever the fuck trying to be in the footage. But when P's recognize he's being uh, recorded and throws up whatever sign, like he, okay, I see the camera, this, that, and the third, put on for the camera. Ty pulls the camera down. Watch. We all know that some kind of way after Ty live, Kanika leaves because she was ready to go and her friends left in the hallway, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, so they say. I'm using someone else's footage to kind of play this out, so. She heads down that hall, of course. Stumbles around a little bit. Remember, I broke this down already at how she kind of looks in the direction she wants to go and actually goes in that direction. Excuse that background noise. I guess I chose the wrong footage to use, but y'all following it just the same, I'm sure. Some folks told me it's a water fountain around that corner, so maybe that was the purpose of her going over there. She goes there, then goes into the men's bathroom. We all know this footage and how it plays out. Just putting the pieces together one by one, event by event, to see if we're on the right path as far as connecting all the dots concerning this case. I really think we are.
your boy go with the gray jacket on and the gray um scully the one from ty live just in case you missed it Now watch, the guy from Ty Live gone. There you go. He was on that elevator. I don't know if y'all can see the time stamp in the corner at the top. Just trying to make sure I'm keeping up with what's popping. I don't know. I don't think that time stamp right. Whatever reason, I can't find clarity in the next piece I'm going to show. Hold up, let me run it back. Oh, did I run it back enough? There's a reason I'm running this back. A lot of us had questions when we watched this foot footage initially. Watch her. Now she looking back. I'm gonna pause it so I can explain what I'm saying. Now she looking back. Now you would think she looking back because somebody's behind her. She's seen something. But as the footage plays on, she doesn't see anybody. A little bit um, after someone else gets off the elevator. One of those guys from the party. However... Now, I recorded this footage before I did um, a little more investigating and looking around. That, like most people know, is actually a guy. A he, she, um, I don't know what they call him politically, you know, to be correct about it, but that's a he, she. And at first I dismissed the fact that this person was just in the hallway and just so happened to be passing through the elevator, et cetera, et cetera. But as, as you've seen with the uh, previous video I posted, that person had more to play um, in the role of Kanika's demise that night than uh, initially thought. So I'm going to let it play out, but then I'm going to connect those pieces together as well. Look all the way to the right. All the way to the right. In the lower right corner. You see that little knob down there? That goes to a door. That door goes to the pool. Everybody's like, well, where's this pool footage? Where's this pool footage? I haven't seen it. Why they won't show it? What's up with that? You know, why they didn't release none of that? They say she was wet when she was found, etc., etc. Y'all know, just like I know, the stuff we've been hearing has been some bull. However, let me point out some things. Let's say, for instance, you come and pass and you hear something. Your natural instinct is to look back. That's your natural instinct. That's what you're going to do. You're going to look back like, what the fuck? What I just heard. I know I heard something behind me or something, and I know... Wasn't nobody in the elevator but me. Let me turn my ass around. Now nah, I ain't see nothing. Again, I say pay attention to that little area on the right-hand side, at the bottom right-hand side of your corner. That's the door to the pool. I'm going to let it play, and I'm going to pause again so you guys can keep up with me. Everybody knows. Back on that elevator. Everybody knows that he goes back and forth quite a few times. Um, and also Monifa comes into the footage and goes towards that pool door, but doesn't open it. She uses her sleeve to touch it, but, um, Shamaya is at the other end of the hallway. So she gets distracted and she doesn't open that door. So I'm going to go ahead and skip past this and put it all in place. So you guys can kind of keep up and see what's popping and see if it comes together the way I'm thinking it comes together. He originally got off, opened back up, and he gone. And nothing. I'm going to 
white girl, when she was going past, she heard something. She turned around, trying to see if somebody was behind her if, or, or if what she heard was coming from behind her. However, nah, not so much the case. She kept going. Everybody was like, well, maybe it was the dude. She saw dude. She heard something. She seen something. She heard something. Yeah, she did. Be down this hall, guys. There's the mother and the son I was telling you guys about in the previous uh, footage. The purpose of me showing this particular footage, footage is so you guys can follow me just a little bit further. We all know that the young lady wasn't going to the pool. She was with her son who had a pillow around his neck. If you guys seen my last video, you all know where we at right now. already know he heads back down because he gets back on the elevators down there. And for him to be at a party for the purpose of only being at a party with his homie and his homies rather because it was a couple of them together but for him to only be there for a party he show is active as hell in them hallways active than a motherfucker he goes back and forth to the front lobby back around to the elevators up and down the elevators he's seen everywhere everywhere There goes Shemaya Monifa. I believe Shemaya was the reason that Monifa didn't open that door or, or attempt to open that door. Y'all saw she did a little jog. She looked back behind her to make sure there wasn't nobody behind her. She tried to go real fast. The reason she did not push that door in that moment is because Shemaya made it to the end of wherever she was going to do her little peek around and called her to come back or signal that she had done had been done looking down that way so she was headed back so when you see monifa reaching for that doorknob and looking around all you know cluster fucked <laughs> shamaya called her name signal her let her know yo i don't see her down here something because then she turns around and instead of opening that door she comes on back you want to leave no fingerprints it's a little bit Now, remember, when all of um, that's going on with the halls and Kanika and the friends searching, it's shit going on at the front desk as well between this guy, the security guy, and several individuals that come up to the front desk that night. Remember, while all that's still going on, Kanika's wandering. Some kind of way ends up in that damn freezer. Some kind of way. Whether somebody put her there or whatever. You know, somebody has something to do with her ending up in that freezer. She just didn't walk in there by herself.
these niggas knew what was going on the whole time. It's a reason why they got went out of town or wasn't able to be interviewed after um, Kanika, I guess, disappeared or was murdered. After he spoke to the police that one time, nobody's heard from him since. There's a couple of other people that nobody's heard from since since um, Kanika passed. And, you know, the initial investigation started, so to speak. Telling them exactly what to do, exactly where to go, exactly what to check out. They knew what was popping that night. They played a big part in what happened that night. He got up the hotel grids, the floor, the floor plan, so he can see what's going on. Each alarm that's signaled for whatever reason, he gets to see exactly the location and know what's popping. In between checking in and out people or whatever. He keeping an eye on everything. Yeah, he on top of everything. Everything. Too much suspect shit. And for me, this part says a lot. Watch the body language of Monifa and Shamaya as they come back into the um, front, the front area, the night of when she's um, with Ty and Peas or whomever, whatever his name is, Dorian, whomever. Um, but watch the body language. Watch how upset Shamaya is. And just pay attention. That's Monifa. Of course, we've seen this footage already. Me and this phone, Lord, we stay fighting. But pay attention to this footage. We already saw Monifa coming to the footage, and she basically over it. She 38 hot for whatever reason. I don't know if she ain't with what was going on or if she was with it. And I don't know. But check out the body language on Shamaya and Bree Bree. You see Ty snatch up Shamaya. She like, whoa, let me go. Let me go. No, nah, whatever you talking about, let me go. I ain't got shit to do with whatever's going on. I ain't with it. My friend gone. My friend missing. You see your friendly neighborhood boy girl just came back into the footage also. <laughs> She heads to the front desk, but then she turns her ass around. Why? She done been back and forth in that, or he, she has been back and forth in that hallway all damn night. That's the same person we saw at the elevator. You see your boy Pees. He there. He's still in attendance. That's how he kicks on over to the front desk to say, whatever. I'm just saying. My whole thing I was breaking down at this part was during the whole live that Ty did at that party, he paid zero attention as far as going over there and kicking it with Shamaya, Bree Bree, and Monifa while he was on his live. He, he didn't kick it with them at the party. So for me, it was really weird to see them kind of kick, not kicking it, but you know what I mean? In the same vicinity with one another searching for Kanika when they weren't together at that party. None of the footage from any of the lives show them even having a conversation or turned up together like that, like that. So for them two um, gentlemen to be the ones, you know, there after hours doing a search for Kanika was like, really? 
they weren't even they weren't even conversating. They weren't even uh, pictured in none of the lives in the same vicinity together. Now they was in the background, but you don't see no conversation. You don't see no turning up. Come on, get on my lab. You know, like they was kicking it. You know how kids do when they actually kicking it and enjoying each other's company. If they doing a live, they in there. If they, you know, what I'm saying having a conversation, they're gonna be in on some of it. But you don't see none of that as far as Ty, Pease, Monifa, Shamaya, and Bree Bree is concerned. But all of a sudden, towards the end of the night, they together. And what dude with the red hat? I thought he was kind of searching too, you know, as far as um, Zach TV's uh, interview went. You know, they was in that interview together. Like, they were searching together. No, they weren't searching together. The dude with the red hat was on his own thing, doing whatever the fuck he was doing. Some shady shit, I'm, sh- I'm sure. And dude with the gray jacket and the um, gray scully, peas, he was on some other shit. You know what I'm saying? He was seen in that um, short little brief elevator footage with some dude in a red jacket. But now, all of a sudden, Ty and peas are together with Monifa, Shamaya, and Bri Bri at the end of the night. I don't know. It just looks sus to me. I'm just saying. So your security do everybody in the same vicinity around the same time. Why? Why is it that Ty and Pease felt the need to stick around with Shamaya and Bri Bri and Monifa? They didn't come there with them. They didn't kick it with them in the footage from the hotel. They were not in inc- Boodled up like they was there together. You seen Tanaja all in the live. She turned up and lit in the footage. None of them was in the footage with him. He was barely paying them any attention. And another thing, the white girl boy. The white girl boy seems to be in and out of a whole lot of footage as well. Back and forth from that front desk, as you saw in the beginning of this particular snippet that I showed, she was he, she, whatever, was headed to the front desk but turn around, you know what I'm saying, had they phone out doing something and turn around and went back the other way, I don't know what that was about, I do know that I posted footage of that that boy, girl, whatever, on the balcony, talking to um, dude them in the red jacket, and um, the dude in the gray hoodie, that I finally identified as far as who he, you know, where he come from, basically, and I'm gonna post that too, and tie that together into what you know, this particular set of footage is about. Now remember, allegedly, the video from the dudes um, with the red hoodies and et cetera, et cetera, you know, the t- the um, Tolliver, Herman, whatever, and the, you know what I'm talking about, the footage that um, from the other hotel, this was supposedly footage from a different hotel when uh, I guess it was debunked or whatever. But as you see, the he, she is in this footage. So if this is footage from another, another hotel, then what the hell is he, she doing in it? You know, what pool are they actually at? You know, it can't be the uh, pool that they initially said it was. What what was it? The Marriott or Double Tree? I think it was a Double Tree. This cannot be Double Tree footage for the simple fact that that he she that you see up there is the same he she that's roaming the halls of the Rosemont. I'm just saying. And if you see, they're on the balcony, meaning they're in a room. Not a room at the Double Tree. They're in a room at the Rosemont. That's the dude in the gray hoodie. He dips in and out of the footage towards the end of the night. Um, and when I posted it initially, folks were saying, well, I heard there was some kind of weed man, a pill dude that popped up, you know, that evening to bring whoever some, you know, drugs or whatever. Who the hell calls the weed man or the dope man with their friend missing? That, that can't be the case. So I don't believe that that's a weed man 
or um, a pill dude that came up to do a special delivery in the midst of folks looking for somebody that's missing. I don't, I don't think that's the T. So I still think he has something to do with it too or know something or connected some kind of way because he was also seen in the footage with the boy girl, uh, I guess in regards to um, the alleged double tree footage, which is not double tree footage. I'm just saying they lying. Notice the fact that it's somebody that Shamaya Monifa and Bri Bri knew, and also somebody that uh, the dude in a red hoodie and his little crew knew as well. So whoever this guy is, is comfortable moving on, on both sides because I guess it's been clear that whoever the guys in the red hoodie um, hoodies are are different gang affiliation than the folks that was around and about. I guess the people that Kanika actually fuck with. You know what I mean? So this particular gentleman kind of moves from both sides so both both crews is familiar with him whomever he is And I use this footage to point out the fact that the dude in the gray hoodie is connected to them dudes and is connected to Kanika's friends as well. Look, he talking, having a conversation, all that. And they follow right behind. I don't think he was the weed dude. I just don't. I don't think he was the dope man. I'm not saying that he might not have had no weed or whatever. I'm just saying that's not what he came up there for.
all them boxes lit up with the people. All right, finally somebody comes in the footage. And notice something. Those dudes was headed past the front desk. But the person at the front desk called them back. Gave them a key card. And then they headed on about their merry way. Notice what's around their shoulders. You see those towels? Did you also notice the fact that Kanika and her friends came to the uh, Rosemont with bikini tops on? Come on. Tell me, tell me that they didn't have a reason to have those bikini tops on. That's something else that's been bugging me. It's like, okay, they came up there for a pool party. Whether or not the footage is available or um, things went down the way that they thought it would as far as everybody wanting to go ahead and get in the pool or whatever. But those girls were dressed for a pool party. And Bree Bree Jacket don't never come unzipped as if she a little uncomfortable. You know what I mean? So maybe she got on some up under her, you know, her jacket or whatever. But you can tell by Monifa and um, Kanika's uh, outfit that they weren't just coming up there just to be out with their titties out. You know what I mean? They came up there for a pool party. And those dudes with the towels around their neck, they was headed to the pool area. Watch. He calls them back, gets a key card. All right, here you go, buddy. How you going to the pool area without a key card? So that's all I got, guys, besides um, the part when they were taken out the freezer. That's how that night broke down. Uh, do, I, do I have all the pieces in place as far as um, the way it played out that night? I'm not sure. I really think I do, though. But I know y'all are big on pointing out when I get it wrong. So feel free to drop a line, leave a comment, you know, give me your insight. How do you think it played out that night? I'm saying what y'all think happened. I think it's a little clear that basically we're all on the same page that um the way it broke down at night is kind of the way that i placed the footage that i'm showing you guys today but again if i'm wrong i know y'all are pointed out with the quickness so just let me know again this is your girl tanika nikki trying to piece this shit together to the best of my ability peace and love